piece of sheet metal is now firmly welded in place and uh, ground down the welds so it's not going anywhere. The next step, bear with me here just a second, is to put in the floor pan. Now, this isn't exactly where it's going to fit. I'm going to have to move it around some. But a couple things I wanted to show you. When I took the old one out, I had marked marks on the uh, uh, inner rocker panel. You can kind of see them there. Here's the black marks. And right there. And what I did is when I had this thing set in the right spot, I remarked this sheet metal. And that gives me a point where I can drill a hole and I know it'll, it'll line back up with the original spot welds. Not that big a deal, but if I've already got bare metal, I might as well connect back to it. One of the other things I wanted to show you was I had to notch out. There's a hump in the floor for some whatever reason, this little hump. Um, and I notched around that because I didn't want to cut the hump out and then have that flat. I don't know why they do that, but that's why I'm leaving it. Um, one other thing, you got this this hump right here represents where your seatbelt mounted and, or your seatbelt mount goes. This is your piece that was in the car, and you can see here's the. It's kind of hard to see the shadow, but there's the same out outline. And what I did already was I ground the welds. And I remove that piece and then I'll come back and get a measurement where it was, this hole was, and I'll put this on the inside and weld it solid. That takes care of that. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is this. Bear with me a second here. This piece was the, um, I think it's for your uh, parking brake. Yeah, it's got that swing arm there for the parking brake. Now this, you can see the shiny metal, that's where it was welded to the floor pan. But up here there's two spot welds. And those spot welds, uh, when I take that loose, it, I'll, this piece will come off. But what I was trying to show you was, before I could cut this apart, I marked it. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, I took a, drew a, just an arbitrary line up here um, and measured Actually, I should say, I measured up three inches from the center of the spot welds, and I drew a line, and then I also put vertical lines that indicate where it was on the original. So that way, when um, I get the new pan in place, I can just drill those two spot welds, take this piece, and, and once I remove the old metal, line up the spot welds, hold it in place, and then weld it in. And I can also get a measurement for these two uh, here on this where it comes to the bottom of the pan. So just a couple things to pay attention to. You know, sometimes people cut these things apart and they don't take measurements, they don't you know, recognize certain things, um, and you end up paying for it later. Um, also, what I'm going to do, I, say, I think I showed earlier, I'm going to trim this panel down. You can see how far it goes up. I don't need it to go up that high. I'm going to bring it down to the, into this radius, or just above, right in front of this radius, I think. And then, uh, I'll have spot welds along the edge of that to hold that pan to the new piece. So it's coming along nice. And now I have the pan fully welded in. There's all the where the holes were to come up through the uh, floor support. I still have a little bit of blending to do. Um, I did overlap the corner down there, and um, everything else is welded here. You can see the I think you can see the edge right here I cut it back and I put it in the spot welds it's kind of dark in here sorry about that um, but everything else has been welded and blended I did go around that hump like I showed you earlier and I did put the seat belt mount in already and uh, now it's just a matter of uh, putting it putting in this other uh, bracket up here that we talked about and then once I um, clean this up a little more I'll spray some uh, primer on this surface because the seat riser is going to go in next and that's where that's that'll be so you want to protect the metal uh, prior to installing the seat riser but uh, making good progress and uh, so we moving on to the other side okay so I've uh, prepared the area where the seat riser is going to go I put some uh, self-etch primer 
but you could just probably choose a regular primer. Um, it's not that critical. It's just uh, trying to keep surface rust or anything from appearing underneath the seat. Um, I also welded in that bracket that I showed earlier with the for the parking brake assembly. You can see those are the welds. And I've uh, along with preparing this area for the seat, I prepared the seat riser. And you can see there's I put I put uh, drilled holes in a similar lo similar location to where um, the originals were. But on uh, as you can see, that's all good to go. But on the inner area where it went against the tran uh, drive shaft hump, um, it was just welded on the edge. Can't really tell there, but it was just you know there was no plug welds or spot welds. So I'll just duplicate that. Um, one other thing I wanted to let you know or show you, I put seam sealer back. This is the you know the floor pan, but I wanted to take care of that area before I put the seat riser in. So I put some seam sealer there and I ran on back. Um, into this corner along the edge. Now I'm not worried about being pretty. It just needs to be, uh, you know, in place and, and seal up the gaps. Um, I'll also put seam sealer on the bottom later on when I go back underneath the car. So next step is to uh, weld in the seat riser. And there's the seat riser. All well, the welds are in place and good. Look good. You can see I just did the edge on that hump. Now at this point, this finishes up all the welding on the driver's side. And what I'll do, I'll treat the areas that I welded uh, more than likely with the um, self-edge primer. And I'll also finish going around the seams with the um, seam sealer. But the other thing I'm going to do is go underneath the car, clean up all the area that, it, um, that I've welded to, and also seam seal it on the underside and that'll you know seal up any gaps keep water from getting out and once that's all in place it'll end up with uh, some heavy coats of undercoating on top of the seam sealer and that'll close up all the gaps and keep it nice and clean but now the driver's side is good and rock solid and I'll move on to that mess so